What's good, YouTube? It's your boy B. Got my dog Aaron here. We can uh, start something new on my channel. Start doing reactions to uh, draw my life videos. So, if you could think of somebody, uh, anybody who's draw my life that seems interesting enough to be reacted to, just comment down below. But right now, we're gonna react to T. Martin's draw my life video. And with no further ado, that's pretty much it. Let's get it. It all started in September of 1992 on a beautiful Friday afternoon in Daytona Beach, Florida. I, I came into the world a little bit early, about three weeks to be exact, and it was nothing short of a miracle. My mom had been told for years and years and years that she would never be able to have kids, and then boop, there I was. So I guess I got pretty lucky. But anyway, I came into the world as little baby Bubba. She didn't know what she wanted to name me. She wanted to make sure she found something that was right. At first, she was thinking of naming me Andrew, but then about a week before before I was born, Hurricane Andrew came through, and it was a really destructive hurricane. She was sitting in her house, the power was out, and she was like, you know what, I'm not gonna name him Andrew. So I'm kinda glad she did. I don't think A. Martin sounds as cool. Thank you, Mom. But uh, anyway, uh, at first it was just my mom and I, my dad wanted absolutely nothing to do with me. So, so it was just her and I, and she had a high up banking job, so we moved around Florida a ton, you know, Daytona, Orlando, Jacksonville, Port Orange, uh, all over the place. And, and then eventually, when I turned three, or you know, when I was in my threes, my dad decided Decided that he did want to be in my life. And, you know, at this point, like, it, it is past the hard newborn years, so it's kind of convenient for him to do that. But, um, anyway, I had to start spending every other weekend with him on visitations and things. And I absolutely hated visiting him, and my mom knew this, but there was nothing she could do. It's, you know, what the courts had ordered. So, uh, you know, he was just, it was a very deceitful and conniving person. He would constantly badmouth my mom in front of me, tear me down emotionally, and then even physically abuse me sometimes. So he just, he, he wasn't a very good dude. I hated going, but I was forced to, and that's just the hand I was dealt. Now, uh, this went on for a few years, and then when I was six, my mom decided that she was going to move us back to Champaign, Illinois, which is where she's originally from, and the point of that was to, you know, kind of attempt to, to distance ourselves from him so he wouldn't be around all the time I wouldn't have to see him every single weekend things like that and it worked out that I would still have to visit him over school breaks and pretty much all of my school breaks were spent flying down to Florida to spend it with him and it was it was awful man like I, during those visits I wasn't allowed to have friends or do anything outside of him and, and all he did was work at the, uh, the yeah, no car wash place that he owned so, so literally I would just sit in the back of this car wash all day every day for like nine weeks at a time and you know obviously that's not what you want to do uh, as a kid, so it was pretty tough, but uh, you know, really what I did a lot of during that time was read. You know, I would go and rent books from the library and things like that, and I would just sit there and read. And I think that's part of where my thirst for knowledge comes from. And honestly, I guess, you know, with every bad, there is a good, so that's kind of an upside of that, but it was still pretty tough. And you know, things just kind of continued to get worse and worse as I got older and you know, more realized what was going on. And then one night when I was 11, his father, who he lived with, uh, he held me down in a chair and he was hawking loogies and spitting them in my face. Damn. Me down. So that was kind of like the last straw. Uh, the next day when I was sitting up at the car wash again, I waited for the, the opportune moment and I you know, had all my stuff in my backpack and I ran away into the woods. And I walked around for about 45 minutes until I found this random subdivision. And, and my mom had actually sewn like a, a secret compartment in my backpack and hidden a cell phone in there for emergencies because I was allowed to have a cell phone. I was not allowed to talk to her outside of the court mandatory like 30 minutes a week. And even then, my dad would listen in on those calls and you know cut him short and things like that. So I used that to call her. She called her lawyer who was local to the area. He came and picked me up and then boom, the next morning, I was on a flight home and I haven't seen or talked to my dad since. So uh, yeah, it was a pretty rough beginning. It was definitely very, very hard. But uh, my mom was always Man. there for me uh, you know, throughout crazy. all of those experiences, and my relationship with her is so close. She's like my rock in my life, and and I've never been closer to anybody else, you know, in the world. And I, you know, I, although it was a Shut tough up, situation, I do, you know, almost I'm almost thankful for it because you know hey, it's made our bond so much stronger. But, uh, yeah, that kind of brings us to the second part of my life, which is a a much more happy one. I mean, I had an amazing childhood filled with friends and sleepovers and crushes and video games and riding bikes and you know all that kind of stuff. Like uh, I actually had a group of friends where. Uh, we made funny, in air quotes, uh, skit videos because they really weren't that funny. But so we uploaded them to YouTube, and I think that's kind of where my passion for like entertaining it and creating and things like that sprouted. I'll have to show you guys some of those videos sometime. That'd be a fun throwback video.
but uh, yeah, well, we always had a lot of fun. Like I remember one time we were out ding dong ditching and recording it in a gorilla suit, and we got a call from our friend's dad, who happened to be the chief of police, and he's like, "Hey, there are some people in this neighborhood going around with a gorilla suit, scaring people. That wouldn't happen to be you guys, would it?" <laughs> and we were like, "Oh no, it's not." And then as soon as we hung up, we immediately started running home. Uh, it was the funniest video, man. I don't know what happened to it. I'll try to find it. But uh, yeah, it was just it was a lot of fun. I was always a very active kid who was always outside, you know, playing any type of sport. You know, I tried everything from soccer to cross country to baseball. But uh, my true passion was basketball. That's the one that I absolutely loved, and I still love and play any chance I get. Uh, there was nothing that I wanted more than to play professional basketball. You can find me in my driveway or up at the Y or you know up at the blacktop or anything all day, every day, whenever I wasn't in school or doing homework or something like that. And and, you know, oftentimes I played on multiple teams. I played some traveling AAU, and then when I was in eighth grade, I actually worked out with the local community college players, you know, guys that were much older than me. But it just, you know, it, it never worked out. I couldn't master the mental part of the game. The height was there. I mean, I'm 6'5". The skill was there. I was naturally pretty good, and I worked really hard. But I just, I, I couldn't get my head around the mental part. I mean, I, I've always been a perfectionist. I probably always will be. And when I missed a shot or made a bad pass or committed a turnover or whatever it was, I could never get that out of my my head. I can never move on to the next play, and that's something that I've always struggled with, and probably always will struggle with. Because I want to be perfect, so uh, you know, it, it just it, it never really worked out. And then also my freshman year of high school, I was playing football wide receiver uh, just before the basketball season, and I ended up breaking my thumb really bad, and that affected my ability to play basketball. And then you know, from there, it just kind of started to fizzle out. I don't know. It, it was really heartbreaking at the time, but looking back now. It's almost like a blessing, that. because with that extra time that I now had, that's when I started to develop my passion for YouTube and for gaming. So like, I, literally everything happens for a reason. When one door closes, ten more open. If you guys ever find yourself you know, up against a wall and get knocked down, Look for those other opportunities because they're definitely there. Everything happens. Keep going. Reason. But uh, yeah, speaking of high school, I had a pretty normal high school experience. It was great. I enjoyed it. I wasn't really one of those guys who you know only stuck with a specific group of people. Like I had my main friends, but uh, I wasn't super clicky. Like I was nice and friendly with everybody. I had a lot of friends. You know, went on some dates. It got into a little trouble here and there. Like it, it wasn't really too out of the ordinary, but it was really a, a truly, truly good time. I mean, if you guys are in high school right now, if you're getting ready to go into it, those are going to be some of the best four years. Of your life. The best you know, as soon as you're out of high school, life. that's when you really start to get hit Trust with a ton of responsibilities. So uh, I enjoy it while you can school. and kick back and have some fun. <laughs> yeah, I remember one really funny I memory, which is back but now, it was probably kind of weird, but uh, really our like school had always had this tradition where the seniors would welcome in the incoming freshmen from the next year. By welcome, I mean, you know, probably not in a very nice way. But anyway, the freshmen were having their, like, freshman orientation getting ready for the next year of school, and this was, like, a couple of days after we graduated, so this was just into our summer and what we did is we knew when they were supposed to be getting out and we went to a friend's house and we filled up an obscene amount of water balloons like a crazy amount and we all hopped into my truck there were like seven or eight of us and I have a, a sport track a Ford sport track which is like a four-door truck with a, one of the shorter beds on the end and then it also has a limo window in it that you can put down so you can kind of like see from the interior of the truck to the bed and like pass things through and we had two guys in the back of the truck like in the seats holding this three-man slingshot for water balloons and then the guy in the front seat was loading balloons into it and flinging them out that back window at people and then we also had like four or five guys in the back of the truck throwing them at people and we were literally just driving in circles around the school and around the parking lot just nailing all these freshmen with water balloons. It was a super hot day so I guess you could look at it as we were doing them a favor but uh, some of the parents weren't too happy and we actually had one that like followed us around for like 30 minutes and we were like trying to get away from it. I don't know. It was, just, it was a funny memory. I've got a lot of those. I'll have to do some high school stories or something for you guys but um yeah, I had a pretty good high school experience, and I did enjoy it, and I hope you guys do too. Now, uh, let's talk about video games, fellas. This is uh, obviously a very huge part of my life. And, and they've just, they've always been like a really big passion of mine, even when I was younger. Like, I remember, you know, playing Pokemon. I would play Pokemon until my eyes bled. Like, I can't tell you guys how many times I've beaten Pokemon Red through Sapphire. Like, I would literally beat them and then start a new game and beat them and start a new game. I used to play so much, I would go to bed at night and I would hear the Pokemon, like, soundtrack playing in my head when the Game Boy wasn't on anymore. And then I would wake up and it would still be playing. That's how much I played Pokemon. I was a master man. But uh, yeah, I still love it. I, I want to do like a Let's Play on my second channel eventually. But um, 
you know, yeah. Uh, so I played a lot of Pokemon. Uh, my first console was the PlayStation 2, where I played things like Spire the Dragon, Crash Bandicoot, Madden, things like that. I picked up a GameCube eventually and played a ton of Super Smash Bros. with friends. Uh, in 2006, I got a PlayStation 3 when it first came out, and I got my first first-person shooter friend, Call of Duty 4. Still one of the best games of all time. I'll never, ever, ever do this. I instantly fell in love with it, and I played the game absolutely 100% nonstop. Now, there was only one problem. I had nobody to play with. All of my friends didn't get the PlayStation when it came out. They waited for the Xbox 360, and they were all playing Halo 3. So whenever I went over to their house, I would play Halo. And, you know, because that was like the, the golden egg that I couldn't get, that's what I wanted to play. I was like, screw Call of Duty. I want to play Halo. So eventually, I, I finally caved, bought a 360, solely to be able to play Halo 3 with my friends. So, I, you know, I got it. I was all excited. We were playing, playing, playing. And then literally a week after that purchase, they all got bored of Halo 3 and decided to switch to Call Call of Duty 4. So I literally, I was so salty about that. But I quickly got sucked back into COD. And, you know, I absolutely love the game. I, I don't know how many times I've 10th prestige on that game. I have like probably seven different accounts. But uh, yeah, it was just, it, it was awesome. I still remember all the memories of, you know, running home immediately after school, playing all night long, saying, screw homework, you know, mom, go make me some pizza rolls. I'm going to play some Call of Duty. <laughs> That's like literally so many nights of my childhood were spent like that. That was awesome. But uh, anyway, the next big kind of like gaming turning point was. Was, uh, when I joined Game Battles in April of 2008 so I could play some COD 4 Game Battles uh, with my buddies from high school and honestly as lame as it sounds this was a huge huge turning point in my life like I immediately fell in love with competitive gaming and it's all I could think about you know my schoolwork didn't really suffer because that was always really important to me but my social life definitely did and I had always been better than all my friends at Call of Duty so, so I kind of stopped playing with them and started you know trying to work my way up the ladder on game battles and continued switching teams and you know being a DB kid super try hard all that kind of stuff uh, and, and you know that's just what I did for a while you know I, I continued chasing the dream for a couple of years I traveled around to a lot of local land events. I went up to a few near Chicago uh, where I actually met and became friends with a couple of pros. You know, if you guys know Dito and Nameless, I'm sure you guys have heard of them. I actually met them like back in, you know, Modern Warfare 2 and maybe even World of War at these, you know, land events and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, I kind of did that for a couple of years, and I, you know, I wasn't bad. I actually did pretty good. I saw some success, but I just, I didn't really see it going anywhere. I didn't see it taking off. I don't know if I couldn't find the right group of guys or what it was. You know, at the time, Halo 3 was a huge competitive game, and Call of Duty was just starting to get its feet on the ground. And around that time, where I was kind of, you know, wishy-washy about what I wanted to do, uh, that's when I discovered YouTube, and that's kind of where I decided to focus my efforts on YouTube. So I remember the first video I watched, it was a COD 4 gameplay from FPS Kyle using an M6 on ambush and I vividly remember how cool I thought Kyle was. Like, Kyle's a friend now. Uh, and it's, just, it's funny, like, looking back and thinking about this. Like, I thought Kyle was the coolest guy on the planet. Honestly, I, I really did. And I wanted to be able to share a passion with, like, the four or 5,000 other people that uh, that watched his videos. So I immediately bought uh, an easy cap for 20 bucks off eBay, and I got to making videos. And, you know, for the next year or so, I, I continued to hone my craft. I, uh, you know, slowly kind of upgraded capture cards. I went from an easy cap to the Hava HD, which was not an HD capture card even though it was in its name and then from there I eventually got a hot podge and, and then you know I, I kind of taught myself you know Photoshop and Sony Vegas and all these editing programs and all that kind of stuff and, and you know I just kind of kept on doing my thing and slowly got better and better and made better and better videos and just kind of you know grinded it out for a long time like I made tons and tons of videos it only got like two or three views so it was a long time before I saw any success but eventually I caught my big break you know, I, I messed around with quite a few channels and, and ideas over the years but eventually I decided to start the T-Martin channel in May of 2010 with the idea of sharing tips and tricks. Like I had gained an extended knowledge of the game from all my competitive play and the idea was to share that knowledge with the more casual players and viewers. So you know this was something that at that time people weren't really doing and I actually had some pretty cool videos like this was back in Modern Warfare 2 with like jumps and spots and things like that and people had never really seen stuff like that and it kind of took YouTube by storm like uh, both in terms of, of subscribers and viewers and things like that like people really liked those videos and they got a ton of views. You know, even more than some of my videos get today. But uh, but then it also helped me meet some of the YouTubers. Guys like Woody, Wings, Onslaught, Kyle, Bash, Bendro, Dunkus, Justra, Murkadurka, Goldie. You know, there's going to be more I don't mention. But uh, because I had these unique and new and kind of like groundbreaking videos, I got 
friends could save for the time. I, it helped me meet them and develop friendships, and we all kind of grew as a group. Like, I remember Bash, he uploaded my Modern Warfare 2 Terminal Tips and Tricks video, and, and that was a big thing at the time. He had a huge deal, and then Woody has always been, like, a really big mentor and, and really helped me out. We used to do the game battles here and stuff like that, and he's just, he, he's been a very, very big influence on my YouTube career. So I, I thank every single one of those guys. You know, I still value those friendships that I have. I'm friends with every single one of them to this day, and I think I will for the rest of my life. I think those are some of the best guys I've ever met in my entire life, and the fact that it happened virtually over the internet at first is pretty crazy to me. So that's pretty cool. But uh, anyway, yeah, so uh, that was in May. I kind of continued chugging along through the summer, and then in October of 2010, I received an offer to become a Machinima Partner channel, which is literally like the holy grail of gaming on YouTube at that point. Like, there were only like, I'd say seven other YouTubers that had it at that time. Like, it was super exclusive. It wasn't like today where anybody can get them. So it was a really big deal, and I'll never forget the moment when I saw that email. Like, I was at a high school football game, and you know, our town takes high school football really, really serious. And it was a Friday night, and and it was the big rivalry game. Like we absolutely Centennial absolutely hate Central, and, and so it was a big rivalry game. We were playing at home, and, and we'd all like painted up our chests and stuff. Like I was covered in like blue body paint, and I had you know the the guys that we had in the front row. It, we spelled out C H A R G E R S, you know Centennial Chargers. That's what our mascot was, and I was the R, and and so you know I got this email, and I'm like, holy shit. This is crazy, and I immediately got out of there and went home. So for the rest of the game, we were the Chargers, I guess. I don't know. I, I like I didn't question it. Like I just I left my car and drove home. There was no question there. And then I spent the rest of the night like claiming my videos. You had to go through each and every video to be able to you know claim it and put ads on it. I was I was so excited, man. It was crazy. And uh, you know that's how I got started. That's where I finally started getting paid. You know, years and years and years uh, after I had been you know grinding this out and, and doing this as a hobby just for fun. And you know, it kind of started off, you know, being pennies per month, and then slowly over time it became enough to allow me to quit my job working as a busboy and doing my, like, side eBay thing that I was doing. And, and then eventually, right at the end of high school, like late in my senior year, is when it really got interesting. It was at a point where, like, I couldn't live off of it, but it looked promising, and it looked like it truly did have a future here in the next year or so. And so I was faced with an enormous decision, like the, the biggest decision I've ever had to make, and that was to either choose school or choose YouTube. You know, I'd always taken school very, very seriously. I had a 4.0 GPA all throughout, you know, everything from you know, kindergarten <laughs> to the end of high school. And I scored a 34 on my ACT. And so, you know, I was looking really good academically. Damn, quite a few uh, full -right scholarships and quite a few universities. And, and what I decided to do was turn all of those down and go to a community college in town so I could stay at home. I could both go to school and I could focus on YouTube. Because it'd be tough to do YouTube if you're in like a, you know, a freshman dorm or something like that. So that's what I decided to do. And three weeks into my first semester at school, uh, it turned into a full-time thing. I got a really cool opportunity to go out to LA to work for like a month straight. It was something I couldn't pass up, so I immediately withdrew from all my classes. I said, see you later. And and yeah, that's kind of where I'm at now. You know, it's been a full-time thing since August of 2011, and I couldn't be happier. And I just, you know, I'm really glad that I made the decision I did to, uh, to keep my options open and, and to allow this YouTube thing to kind of flourish. Come on, guys. But anyway, so yeah, uh, we did that. I was doing full-time living at home. Eventually, I decided to move to LA with a couple of some YouTube buddies so I can quit to start job. Gamer. Sure. Some of you guys might remember this. It was uh, myself, uh, Tom, oh, you or Jericho, everybody up, Brennan, or Gold Glove, and then Robbie or Muzza Fuzza. We all moved out to LA. We got a house together. The idea was to make this like YouTube gamer reality television web series type thing. Just like a, a more in real life based channel of a bunch of us guys coming together and, you know, kind of living the dream and doing all kinds of fun stuff and, you know, making funny skit videos and playing pranks on each other and that kind of thing. And we actually had a, a lot of really, really good ideas. And I wish we could have made this plan come to fruition, but, uh, but it didn't. You know, it just didn't work out. At that time, uh, YouTube was really starting to pick up speed for all of us. All of our channels were starting to do really well. And we just, we didn't have the time to focus both on our channels and on this entirely new idea so it was kind of next we just lived together for a while which was fun you know I enjoyed being out there but uh, you know also at that time like I had started talking to this girl and I literally started talking to her like a day before I left to move to California so that was really bad timing but I've been talking to her and talking to her and talking to her and you know obviously she was a big uh, part of my decision to move out and then also I was I was missing home I was missing family I was missing friends things like that so uh, probably like eight months into moving out there I moved back home so I could be closer to friends family uh, and this girl 
girl who I thought was, you know, the girl of my dreams. So, you know, I kind of you know, stayed at home that summer, uh, and then eventually she was going off to school in Iowa. So I followed her against everybody else's advice. You know, my mom, my friends, my family, everybody I knew said that I was an idiot to do that. And I said, screw you guys, I'm in love, I'm going to do this. So I moved out there, I got an apartment. Uh, you know, I know, guys. About six months later, I bought a house because I thought, you know, this was legit. I thought this was going to be the end all be all. And then, you know, eventually, slowly started to realize that we weren't really right for each other. And we ended up breaking up a few months or about a month after I bought a house. So, uh, you know, obviously that was a big slap to the face. That was a big, like, wake up moment, like, whoa. What am I doing with my life right now? So I know that obviously sucked. Uh, and then you know, a couple of days later, my basement flooded and it ruined a bunch of my electronics that I had in the closet. And, and you know, it was a really big hassle to clean up. It was super, super expensive too. So you know, that was just kind of like insult to injury. And, and then I eventually moved back home to Illinois just a couple of weeks ago to be close to my mom, friends, and family. And you know, things were starting to look up. I was really enjoying my time at home. I had really missed being here. And and then. My dog died. My, my childhood dog, Sadie. You guys have seen her on this channel before. Uh, it's something that I haven't really talked about. I posted one Instagram picture, but it's just, it, it's, it's Man, really tough for me. Because uh, she, you know, she was laying by my feet when I played my first game battle match. I, I've had her since I was like nine years old. You know, she's always been there for me, always been, you know, through all of my triumphs and all my failures in life. And she was just, uh, honestly, like my best childhood friend. I absolutely loved her. Uh, that dog to death, and, and I can't believe she's gone. You know, she just, she was really old. She was like 14 and a half, uh, and, and her body just started to shut down. I think it was her kidneys. You know, that was a problem. They were keeping her from eating, and, uh, you know, she just, she started to get really, really skinny, uh, and she she wouldn't eat. She, she was losing all of her energy. It was tough for her to walk, things like that. And the thing is, it's like, her mind was still 100% there. She was still a happy dog. Anytime she saw me, you know, her eyes would light up. She would want to lick my face and things. She just couldn't. And it was just, it was so hard for me to do. And we could have kept her alive for probably a few more months, uh, but I didn't want to do that to her. I don't want to prod her with needles. I don't want to give her pills. I didn't want to, you know, have her suffer because she was in pain. You could see it. And, and so we had to put her down here a couple of weeks ago, and it was just, ah, uh, it's such an empty hole in my heart. I can't believe how much I miss that dog. But uh, you know, you, you just have to move on. You gotta live with the happy memories and, and don't, you know, focus on the, the bad part of it. Just focus on, you know, how much fun she was since I was like nine years old. So uh, yeah, that was really tough. And, and that kind of leads us up to where I am now. You know, it's kind of current day. You know, it's the summer. I'm gonna be 22 in a couple of months. Uh, I'm still doing YouTube full time. Uh, I'm planning on moving down to Texas with my two best friends from high school at the end of the summer. That should be pretty fun. Uh, and just, you know, things are starting to look up. Like, uh, they really are. Uh, YouTube has never been going so great. Like, and not in terms of like views and stuff. I'm, I'm doing well in that regard, but I've just never been happier or more motivated to make you guys great videos. Like, I'm just really thoroughly enjoying what I'm doing. I'm making more videos than I've ever made before. I'm making at least a video a day on T. Martin and at least four videos a day on T. Martin too. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm really enjoying it. Like, I wake up every morning thinking about how I'm gonna entertain you guys, and I go to bed every night thinking about how I'm gonna entertain you guys. And next day and I just I absolutely love that and I can't thank you guys uh, enough for for everything you've done to change my life like I honestly I'm a normal kid there is nothing special about me whatsoever for whatever reason you guys decided to enjoy my videos whether they're entertaining or they help you out they help you get better at cod or you just like to listen to some guy ramble on while you're taking a poop whatever reason it is it's pretty cool and I could never thank you guys enough like you guys have changed my life in so many ways I have no clue where I would be without you all and, and I hope I never have to know that place like I, I hope I never have to go there because that would uh, that would definitely suck you know, I just I absolutely love my life because I get to you know focus on my passion each and every single day because of each and every single one of you guys and, and thank you guys so much again like you you literally I owe you guys everything and I will never forget that and I just hope that well you that's pretty much it for this video some sort of T Martin for everything that you've done for my me. life so, uh, truly thank you guys I be. really truly do love you all no, I, I can air. You guys common sense and uh, and thank you guys uh, for y'all be sure to go subscribe to the channel I'll put everything down in the description below but as always we stay solid we out peace we keep going let's let's get to the century mark I'm going to be 120 years old making YouTube videos. All right. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. That was Draw My Life. Uh, this was kind of meant to be like a, a thousand video special since we have a thousand T. Martin videos now. And, uh, and I know I'm not the best draw in the world, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it uh, nonetheless. So anyway, thank you guys so much. Really do appreciate it. I will catch you all later. Peace out.